Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show. And I've got a new friend online. He's in the commercial world, the commercial real estate. And his name is Barry, and the last name is Saywitz. You there, Barry? I'm here. Greetings. So you're out in, are you in Western, West California? Uh, Southern California. Like, so. Right in LA there? Uh, Orange County. Um, but yeah, so. Okay. Right. I got a friend that lives in Temecula. Yeah, not far. There you go. How long have you been out there? Uh, too long to remember, but uh, okay. originally in Chicago, and we're getting to the time of year where I enjoy living in Southern California even more. That uh, makes good sense. Yeah. So we're settled and uh, we're dealing with uh, all the things that come our way here on the West Coast. And uh, you've been in the real estate world for quite a while? Yes, more than 30 years. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, doing uh, sort of the same things, different day, and adjusting to the market and the economy and the environment. And the COVID. Yes. <laughs> My background is primarily in the event industry, but I've kind of been fascinated by real estate because it's, it's also a wide vertical. You know, there's a lot of moving parts, you know, just the residential commercial, and there's all these other elements that come into play with the, with the financing and the maintenance and insurance and brokerages and all that stuff. There's a lot going on. Yeah, and the combination of uh, the economic environment uh, combined with COVID, combined with companies uh, being shut down, partially shut down, trying to deal with those challenges uh, presents uh, a number of different challenges depending upon what industry you're, you're in and what side of the uh, conversation you're on in the commercial real estate world, whether you're the landlord or the tenant and, and trying to work through that. So is that something that your company deals with too? Like, uh, you know, because a lot of people you know, the financial thing, they're having to kick the can down the road because people ain't buying stuff in the shopping malls. So they might yes. not be able to pay the rent and you kind of have to help people with that kind of stuff then at all? Yeah. So, so our company basically represents tenants or companies when they're looking to uh, lease commercial real estate, whether it's office or industrial space or retail space. And um, whether that's renewing an existing lease or expanding or relocating, um, we do it all, and, and uh, we do that predominantly here in Southern California, but we are negotiating transactions in 20 or 25 states at any given time and have done business throughout the country. And so when you talk about the current economic environment and you talk about COVID, it really affects different people depending upon what industry they're in and depending upon what part of the country they're in because each state, and here in California, really each county, uh, has different restrictions and is in a different place in terms of reopening and, and, and how that happens. And so uh, the combination of national and then state uh, and even citywide moratoriums on evictions uh, and how landlords and tenants deal with each other um, comes into play. And then you have that combined with the fact that the commercial real estate markets here in Southern California as a whole are pretty tight and kind of a landlord market. And so you've got tenants that are struggling, trying to work through their business issues. And then the first place they go is to the landlord saying, hey, I got problems paying the rent. My world is disrupted. Can you help me? What can you do for me? And, and then the issue is whether the landlord can or cannot, whether they're willing to or not, and what the alternative is uh, to how that goes. And so it presents a, certainly a number of challenges. And we're stuck in the middle as the broker consultant trying to manage expectations and goals and objectives from both sides of it. Yeah. Well, so with all that, uh, with uh, the years of experience, I bet that's really helpful. It's almost like a marriage counselor uh, <laughs> or like a, a mediator to kind of yeah. say, hey, hang on here. You, you got to understand the situations here. Yeah. And then, you know, look, you, you have mom and pop companies that have different uh, motivations and situations versus national companies. And then we have clients that are national companies that are headquartered in other parts of the country that have a totally different experience dealing with real estate in California and not really, you know, there's an education process of, hey, this is how it's going here. This is not how it's going in Florida or New York or, or some other state. And so um, no question, it, it's a challenge. And although I've been in the business long enough to have lived through ups and downs in the real estate cycles and ups and downs in the economy and the dot bomb and the recession and all those things, you are to a certain degree, again, in somewhat uncharted waters uh, in terms of we have no idea how long it's gonna go and you have different industries impacted 
uh, you know, in timeline and in severity worse than ours. So. But someone with your experience, I think that's really helpful. Like, again, my background's in the event industry. And quite honestly, I, I've been, I started doing magic when I was a little kid that got me in the event business. So there's things that have happened, even though it isn't related to COVID, there's things that have happened that I can kind of relate to and pass that on to someone else that has maybe hasn't gone down that path. So I'm sure you've got experiences that maybe it isn't COVID related, but there's other situations out in Southern California, I guess you deal with earthquakes and things like that. It might yeah. be some similar situations. Yeah, and, and look, you're just trying to do damage control really for everyone involved and trying to work through the issues at hand. And uh, that, that's really it, is trying to get a, a path to be able to fight another day. And is that your, is your primary client the people that rent the space or the people that have the space for rent or both? Yeah. So, so I would tell you that our primary client on the brokerage side is the tenant. And so we are advising the clients on what to do and, and you know, how to manage expectations in terms of dealing with the rent. And then we are, in fact, dealing with negotiating with the landlord, whether that's renegotiating or temporary payment plans uh, or just long term arrangements. Uh, but I would also tell you that. Uh, we have a separate side of the business, which is an investment arm where we own uh, apartment buildings and office buildings throughout Southern California, where we oh. have 1,000 tenants, both residential and commercial. And so if I flip my hat for a second and put on my landlord hat, I would tell you then we are also living through uh, all the other dynamics of, of a landlord and trying to address the challenges of our own tenants who yeah. are clearly struggling. Is that kind of almost like REITs, real estate investment trusts? No, nah, not so much, only because uh, REIT is really a publicly traded entity and we're privately held. But uh, the issue is, look, the more stuff you have, the more properties you own and the more tenants you have, the more stuff you have to deal with. And but you're dealing with all those different kinds of properties like strip malls versus uh, shopping malls, maybe vacation homes or uh, retirement homes. Uh, not so much retirement homes, but you know, our portfolio consists of office buildings, industrial, retail, um, apartment buildings, uh, some vacation rental properties. And it, it has been really on a case by case basis. Each one's got its own set of uh, drama and dynamics. Sure. I can see how that could be very helpful for uh, you know a new entrepreneur that's got this great idea and they've got to get some space, but they're pretty much, uh, I wouldn't say ignorant, but not knowledgeable of all the different things that are happening. Like a, a situation happened where a friend of mine just opened up a fitness center and the space he rented, um, his, all of a sudden his AC went out and he was responsible for it. He didn't realize that. Yeah, and, and so look, as a small business owner, you gotta have a good working relationship with your landlord, otherwise you, you got big problems. And so, you know, again, back to the COVID, everybody was looking for assistance from the landlord. And in some instances, the landlord can do it and in others, they're just either not able to or their lender doesn't allow them to or it just doesn't warrant it. And, and so, um, you know, from a tenant standpoint, um, if you have a triple net lease and you're responsible for the air conditioning and the roof and those kinds of things, these are protections that you would need to or want to incorporate into the lease agreement on the front end and try and minimize the exposure that you would have. And that, that's part of the role that we take on the brokerage side is advising the clients and making sure they don't get into problems later on. Uh, and at the same time, trying to get them the best set of economic terms, whether that's rent, free rent, concessions, or protections uh, going forward in the lease. That's what I was saying. It's a good to work with someone like you because you kind of already know those things that might come into play. And also you're networked with a lot of other people that may have similar situations, or maybe you can joint venture a situation because you know a lot of different people in the same, same world. Yeah, and obviously if somebody's looking to move or expand, we do have relationships, as you mentioned, with movers and telecommunications companies and sign companies and, and all the things that go into a move or an expansion where we can get our clients, uh, certainly a quality vendor, but also in many instances, sort of the good guy discount because of the relationships that we have. Um, and so it's more of a soup to nuts thing as opposed to, hey, here's a building and this is what it costs. Don't you like the windows? Isn't it nice? Our approach really is um, we are an extension of uh, the client and act as an advisor and trying to look out for their best interest. And so we guide them through the whole process from start to finish uh, in terms of the site selection, identifying the buildings, negotiating the deal, and then walking them through the legal documents. And then we don't go away when the lease is signed. 
uh, we're there for them uh, throughout you know, the term of the lease if they need help uh, going forward. That's really valuable right there, just having those connections with the, like it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And if you have all those different uh, vendors and resources that are available, it's good to know a person like you. <laughs> yeah. So look, like we tell people all the time, I would not go to court and represent myself as much as I think I know how to speak and I think I know the general gist of it. Uh, that's a mistake. You, you would want a professional to help you with your taxes. You would want a professional to help you in court. And if you only negotiate a lease every three or five or 10 years, and it's going to impact your business for an extended period of time, you want to make sure you're not making any mistakes and you've got somebody who does it for you. Can help you. I even outsource my oil changes now. I don't do that stuff anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, but the, the, um, you know, the, the, the status of the economy uh, is really uh, very tumultuous at this point because you have different markets around the country that are up and down depending upon um, where they are and how that goes. For example, here in Southern California, the industrial market is uh, in Los Angeles is the tightest in the entire country and the vacancy is, you know, for rough numbers, 1% or less. Uh, and so you, you, as the tenant, have very little negotiating leverage and very limited opportunities in the marketplace. And as much as people might say, hey, you know, it's COVID and I should get a deal or somebody should work with me, the reality of it is nobody needs to work with you because there's somebody else standing in line who right. take the space versus <laughs> go to a different part of the country and we're in, you know, pick a city in, in, you know, in Louisiana and we're in the suburbs and there's not, you know, five people standing in line. There's not anybody standing in line. We have a different set of dynamics. Uh, this is a little off the topic a little bit, but um, do you deal with like the solar element of things? Because I understood that California has like a solar mandate for new developments and stuff. Do you deal with that kind of stuff? Yeah, we don't for our specific business. There are a number of solar mandates for really more residentially uh, geared and there are tax incentives from the government and all kinds of programs. Um, but uh, the reality of it is it doesn't really make a lot of sense uh, for most commercial properties, uh, only because the um, incentives that are available uh, don't really benefit the landlord if the tenant's paying the bill, and it's not worth it for the tenant to invest that kind of money uh, in someone else's building if they don't own it. Uh, I think if it was an owner-user and you owned the building and you knew you were going to be there for a long period of time, then it would make sense to explore that as an owner. But as a tenant... Yeah, you're better off finding a different job. Interesting. <laughs> you learn something every day. <laughs> well, Barry, I don't like to do these too long. So keep them kind of content, condensed and uh, sure. get the information out to the people. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, your links to your website and things and put that in the descriptions and, and I'll shoot it off to the internet and I'll share that with you. And if you could do the same, that'd be much appreciated. So how do we get a hold of you? What is your little website and contact information? Yeah, so website is saywitz.com, S-A-Y-W-I-T-Z. And we have all kinds of fun stuff there, videos and TV shows and other more detailed explanations that would be pertinent to the particulars of what we do. And, and what I would tell you also for your viewers and people out there is that the best thing about our services on the commercial brokerage side of it is we are paid by the landlord. So there really is no direct out of pocket monetary expense for people to utilize our services. And I don't want to say it's free because nothing in life is 100% free. It's part of whatever deal you sign. But the reality of it is the landlord or the owner is paying our fee. And now you have someone on your team that's representing you trying to get the best deal for you. Um, and, and it really didn't, we weren't reaching in your pocket to, to physically write a check. That's a very cool relationship. And uh, I can't stress enough, uh, someone that's already kind of been there, done that, kind of paved the road for you to be able to walk through so you don't make those mistakes. Because I've been in situations like that, just personally with residential homes that I didn't realize that that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And, and in many instances, there's a conflict of interest because you have the agent representing both buyer and seller or landlord and tenant. And it's, you, you have no idea where the uh, allegiance lies. And um, <laughs> if you have somebody on your end that truly just represents your interest, then you know they got your back. And that's what we do. Well, very good. Well, I appreciate you. Yeah. What's that? I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a lot of fun. I mean, uh, in these days, you don't get to talk to people very much anymore. So it's good to get a whole Zoom call. Next time we'll do it in person. Okay, Barry, appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Okay, you got it. Take care.